right, I'm here today with Joseph Spencer. Uh, he's a philosopher and an associate professor of ancient scripture at Brigham Young University. Um, he's just published his seventh book, A Word in Season, Isaiah's Reception in the Book of Mormon. Uh, he's been an editor of the Journal of Book of Mormon Studies, um, the associate director of the Latter-day Saint Theology Seminar, and vice president of the Book of Mormon Studies Association. Today we're talking about 2 Nephi chapters 11 through 25, um, and we have this beautiful um, etching by Annie Poon. It's called Trumpets. She did this in 2017. Um, Joe, can you tell us a little bit about the scripture that's being visualized here and what yeah. we're looking at? So this, uh, this little passage comes right as you transition into the Isaiah chapters, right? You've just had these five chapters of Jacob, Nephi's brother talking, and now Nephi's teeing us up to read Isaiah. Right. Yeah, and hence the talk of three witnesses, right? Jacob plus Isaiah plus Nephi. Do you see in the, in the etching here, is there any evidence of who could be who, or we just have three, I, three figures? I mean, I've wrestled with this a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I've sort of played with the possibility of each of them being each of them, right? right. What if that's Isaiah? What if that's Nephi? What mm -hmm. if, um, but I don't, I don't know that it gets decided for us. Yeah. Okay, so we have three figures. Um, but they're they're trumpeting. So yeah. what? Why trumpets? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what to think about that. Because the I mean the passage and the bit that uh, that Annie Poon puts right on the the etching mm -hmm. is uh, of course about establishing my word. Mm -hmm. And so to have the image of music is a very sort of contrary to expectations way of portraying it. Right? Is the word the sound, the tune? Or is this something that accompanies the word, and this is the establishing of the mm. word, but the word is something else? Okay. Yeah, I think it leaves it kind of nicely open. Mm -hmm. I think, too, just um, the fact that it's trumpets and the music notes and these kind of cartoonish figures, it almost reminds me of um, like a Dr. Seuss kind of yeah. a thing yeah, with I the music. The same. <laughs> and just a kind of joyful feeling. So I feel like it's a piece that expresses joy and rejoicing. How does that factor into what Nephi is doing with yeah. Isaiah? Yeah. Um, well, I'll complicate it slightly. Okay. That's okay. Because yeah, yeah the, of the three figures, only one of them looks genuinely joyful. Okay. Right? Okay. You've got two figures who, and it's striking to me that the figures who can see more of what's going on, mm -hmm. uh, they're further back and their eyes are wide open, uh, and they seem, at least one of them, seems genuinely upset. Okay. Right? The figure that's dressed <laughs> very clownishly. Uh, mm -hmm. And one of them seems a little like nervous or trying to see what's going on. I don't know. But the character that's in the front, that's the shortest, and is maybe a child, um, mm -hmm. is genuinely just eyes closed, absorbed in the music. Yeah. Um, so if that's Nephi, then boy, does that capture something. <laughs> right? That Nephi is just, we're doing Isaiah. I am in my element. Yeah. Right? yeah, I mean, there's those uh, verses where he says he rejoices in the words of Isaiah. Yeah. And, um, uh, he says that the, the people can lift up their hearts and rejoice when they read these words. Yeah, so, it's yeah. his last words before he starts quoting. Yeah, I'm struck by the fact that the, you get these like little elements of nature, birds mm -hmm. and a cat, uh -huh. uh, and they're all focused on that figure in the front. Oh, um, so the passage from Isaiah that this was making me think of, I have no idea if this is what Annie Poon had in mind, <laughs> um, is a little child shall lead them, which Nephi will quote in this long oh. stretch, right? Hmm. Um, and there, of course, that shows up in along with the image of the lamb and the lion being mm -hmm. together. So you get this kind of harmony of nature and a child leading. I wonder if she's playing on this possibility that Nephi absorbed in this ends up being sort of a childlike figure leading us through something that's very complex, but in a way, hmm. maybe it could actually bring some peace as we read Isaiah. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, are there any other artworks that deal with Isaiah in the Book of Mormon that you know of? I'm not, I don't know that I'm familiar with yeah. any. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I can't think of any off the top yeah. of my Yeah, I mean, there's obviously a long history of art on Isaiah, but mm -hmm. outside of the Latter-day Saint tradition, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what's, what's, uh, is there anything you see that's like especially unique about it or problematic about it? Um, Unique. Obviously, the whimsy of it is yeah. really striking, uh -huh. yeah. right? Um, and we don't tend to be whimsical about the Book of Mormon. We <laughs> Latter-day Saints were very <laughs> safe. Isaiah, the Book of Mormon. <laughs> Although maybe Isaiah is one of the things we feel we can get a little whimsical about, oh, just because sure we're enough. so like, I don't know what this means. Do you know what this means, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, the whimsy itself is mm -hmm. striking and unique. Um, I don't know that it's problematic, though. I think it could strike some people as sort of, oh, should you talk about scripture in this no. way, or should you portray scripture this way? Oh, um, but uh, but yeah, I, I think it raises a lot of questions uh, in really interesting ways that some might feel a little less uncomfortable with. But I don't know that I see it mm -hmm. as 
problematic in yeah. a way. Yeah, I think it's fun. I, it made me think about the scripture differently. And I noticed that the trumpet is like connected. Mm -hmm. So they it's all have trumpet. a kind of mouthpiece, but it's all connected to yeah. the same message that's going out. Yeah, which is lovely, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, what's your personal reaction to this piece or just to these Isaiah scriptures? Yeah, those are two very different questions. <laughs> read the book, right? <laughs> yes. yes, I have written a fair bit about yeah. Isaiah in the Book of Mormon. Um, but yeah, part of what I like about this is that it captures the fact that Isaiah is different things in different people's hands, mm -hmm. and, and in the Book of Mormon especially. It's one thing for Abinadi, it's another thing for Nephi, it's another thing for Jacob or for Lehi, and even another thing for Christ himself mm -hmm. when he comes to visit. Uh, so I like this, that it, what this trumpet is doing in the hands of these three musicians is very, yeah. very different. Yeah. Um, so I like that, and it captures something there. And maybe the curling, twisted nature of the horn feels something like the way we feel Isaiah, right? Mm -hmm. Where is this going? How are we getting there? But maybe at the end we can feel something coming together. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you. Anything yeah. else you wanted to add? No, I think that's good. Okay. Thank you so much for yeah. talking with us. Yeah. Happy to do it.